Never has a single player video game gotten as much post-release support as Final Fantasy XV. Hi, I'm Sick Adrian with the leaderboard, and we've created a retrospective on the ever-evolving world of EOS with Final Fantasy XV one year later. Make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to become part of the notification squad. <laughs> The Final Fantasy XV Multimedia Universe Many gamers who finished Final Fantasy XV last year really enjoyed the experience, but were disappointed to find that the game lacked some necessary plot elements. Some fans felt that certain parts of the story could have been expanded on in development. The Final Fantasy XV Square Enix team has said that this vagueness is one major regret with the finished product. But director Hajime Tabata has stressed that he and his team are very proud of the game. He's also said that they would like to try to patch up plot holes using DLCs and other media, but we'll get to that part later. Part of the lack of story-based content in the game can be attributed to Square Enix's ambitious plan to create a larger Final Fantasy XV universe, which was meant to fill in a lot of external information about the world of EOS. Square Enix is no stranger to the whole polymorphic content multimedia extravaganza thing. Remember the compilation of Final Fantasy VII, the Ivalis Alliance, and Fabula Nova Crystallis? Well, the universe of Final Fantasy XV is Square Enix's latest initiative. The Kingslave Final Fantasy XV film and Brotherhood Final Fantasy XV anime miniseries got the ball rolling before the game's release, and filled in the holes of the story that the core game left unexplained. Are you wondering why the Choco Bros are so tight? And what went down that fateful night back home when Noctis was out? Well, Kingslave and Brotherhood have got you covered. Kingslave functioned as a giant prologue to the game. The film revolves around Noctis' father Regis, the titular Kingslave Knights, and the takeover of the Kingdom of Lucis by the Empire Niflheim. While not totally required viewing, but in my opinion totally required viewing, it does fill in the big glaring hole about what transpires in the prologue while Noctis is away from home. Brotherhood was a prequel story that gave further details about Noctis Noctis' relationship with his crew of companions, Prompto, Gladiolus, and Ignis, as well as his proposed marriage to Luna Freya. The series was released for free on YouTube and Crunchyroll between March and September of 2016. In 2017, Square Enix further expanded the multimedia Final Fantasy XV universe just a little bit more. On June 28, 2017, Final Fantasy XV A New Empire released worldwide for mobile phones. The game loosely covers the development of Insomnia as an empire, but it was an alternate take to the story, so it wasn't really essential to the Final Fantasy XV story. September 13, 2017, brought Goddess King's Knight, Wrath of the Dark Dragon. If you didn't know, King's Knight is referenced by Noctis and his friends, and as it turns out, is an homage to one of Square Enix's earliest scrolling shooter games, King's Knight from 1986. It's been updated for iOS and Android devices, so you can now play it in real life on your phone and find out what all the fuss is about. It's got multiplayer support for four players, so you get your Choker Bros in on King's Knight, Wrath of the Dragon. Monster of the Deep Final Fantasy XV brings us the first ever Final Fantasy game in VR. It was released on November 21st, 2017 on PlayStation VR. When when it was revealed in 2016, it was originally billed as a first-person shooter, but after a lackluster demo display, Square Enix changed the concept to a fishing game. Don't worry, you still get to shoot some things in the final boss battle. It was a big improvement on the initial VR showing at E3, which only had what appeared to be an on-rail shooting section and a very awkward driving with Cindy section. But what if you're not into ancillary mobile apps and want the full Final Fantasy XV experience on your phone? Well, early 2018 is going to bring you Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition. This ambitious game promises to offer all of the dialogue and story elements of the full Final Fantasy XV, including all the added DLCs, but on your phone. We have no idea how this is going to happen, but the whole thing will apparently be told in just 10 episodes, which can be purchased in a bundle for the surprisingly low price of $19.99. It was slated for a winter 2017 release, but even mobile games are hard to make, especially if you're essentially remaking all of Final Fantasy XV for phones. Now all we have to wait for is the Nintendo Switch version. Fixes and changes. Square Enix immediately went to work on patches after the game's release. If you're new to the channel or just skip the video, we released a video on 15 reasons that made Final Fantasy XV lame. So in this section, we're kinda gonna retread that and talk about the changes they Made. Before we even rang in 2017, Square Enix patched in features like a portable music player that allowed gamers to listen to the game's expansive soundtrack without getting in the car, they added in attacks inspired by the cinematic Omen trailer, and they created an archive to log your fishing progress and all the recipes that Iggy cooked for you. Square Enix wrapped up 2016 with the addition of New Game Plus and the Holiday Pack DLC which included various items for gamers to modify their play experience. February 2017 pushed the level cap to 120, and they didn't stop at leveling up your party. They also leveled up PS4 Pro compatibility with a light mode that prioritized frame rate at up to 60 frames per second. And developers introduced timed quests and in-game contests. March brought a much needed fix to chapter 13. And spoiler alert, you know, giant warning, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Those who have played Final Fantasy XV remember that chapter 13 is where the linear storytelling part of the game completely takes over. You lose all your weapons and party members and you have to slowly stealth fight your way through a series of baddies using a magic ring that takes forever to charge. Also, as you may have noticed, the hide and jump button of the game are the same 
same, and that's a bit of an issue when you're trying to duck behind anything. This repetitive and overly long section of the game didn't add much to the story until you meet up with the rest of your party, and it really stressed out many gamers who were used to the more traditional RPG style gameplay. While this change of style was a deliberate choice by the developers, Square Enix gave fans what they were asking for with a new path through chapter 13 called Verse 2. This alternate route featured Gladiolus and revealed a lot of what was going on with the other characters during this part of the game. For those of you who were frustrated with the original chapter 13 and didn't play the update, it might be fun to go back and see what was happening with the other guys while Noctis was stuck in his stealthy version of existential hell. On to lighter things, remember the regalia? Or more specifically how its flight mode would net you a game over if you didn't land it just right? Or the fact that it could barely go off-road? Well, Square Enix kicked off summer updates by introducing the regalia type D off-road model. Sure, you can't fly anymore, but at least you don't have to follow the rules of the road. You can even run over smaller enemies as you blaze your own trail. As summer went on, the game added in new cross-chain attacks, all the better to punish your enemies with. The Magitek exosuits got a makeover, they don't look like Power Ranger suits anymore, for better or for worse, and the archives were updated with the bestiary. Developers also added a chapter select for players who finished the game. October saw a new update to chapter 12 that filled in backstory on the War of the Astrals. It was sorely needed. It filled in some holes in the conflict between Ifrit and Shiva. The big guns came in November, with the multiplayer expansion, Comrades. Not only is Kingsglaive's Libertus finally in the game, but now you can create your own Kingsglaive member and fight alongside your friends in the world of Ruin. Oh, and you thought Square Enix was done? Nope. The December update brings us Character Swap. That's right, in the main game, you're finally able to play as Noctis as well as his chocobros, Ignis, Gladio, and Prompto. And to be completely honest, before I bought the game, I was under the assumption that you could switch between characters, but that definitely wasn't a thing. DLC Episodes with Friends In the ever-expanding quest to add to the story of Final Fantasy XV, the developers created three special DLC episodes focusing in on our favorite companions, at points in the story where they were conspicuously absent. The first, episode Gladiolus, was released in March of 2017, along with the previously discussed updates to Chapter 13. The episode takes place after Gladiolus gets tossed around like a ragdoll by Ravis Knox Florette in Chapter 7, about midway through the game's narrative. Turns out, Gladio's hanging with your old buddy Kor as he goes on a quest to be a better, stronger guardian for Noctis. The quest culminates in a boss battle with one of the most classic Final Fantasy characters to span the series since 5, Gilgamesh himself. Episode Prompto was released in June of 2017, and similarly acts as a side quest to the main journey of the game. Fun-loving Shutterbug Prompto is no stranger to the hardships of life, as his Brotherhood Final Fantasy XV episode proved. However, June's episode Prompto really shook things up for him, and starts when Noctis throws Prompto from the train to Gralia. It turns out that getting thrown off the train in Chapter 12 was the least of Prompto's problems. The game then follows Prompto after he's taken by a group of Magitek soldiers and has to find a way to escape. And major spoilers ahead, so if you want to skip this part, totally do that. It's actually during this time that Prompto learns that he's a Magitek clone, sort of like a combo of Cloud from Final Fantasy VII and Vivi from Final Fantasy IX, which is a huge detail he drops out of nowhere at the end of the regular game. So many fans who played Episode Prompto really appreciated getting to see what prompted this revelation. Players also get to link up with fan favorite Aranea Highwind and experience Prompto's unique gun-based combat and even some Square Enix flavored tactical espionage action. And at the end of this episode, Prompto has to kill his creator and comes to terms with the truth of his existence. And also, you get to ride on a snowmobile, so that's cool. So how the heck did Ignis go blind after the events of Chapter 9? What the heck is Ravis doing there? And are we finally going to figure out his whole deal without needing to infer from Kingslave stuff? And oh god, did Ignis just put on the Ring of the Lucii? As of writing this video, episode Ignis isn't out, but it looks to be jam-packed with the last of the answers that Final Fantasy XV fans desperately crave. And they brought in legendary composer Yasunori Matsuda of Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross fame to do the music for this episode, which is fitting considering the DLC has two endings and a fight with Noctis. Final Fantasy XV is leaving 2017 with a bang, but 2018 isn't coming in with a whimper either. Even more story content is headed our way throughout 2018. Director Hajime Tabata revealed that episode Ignis was intended to be the end, but the fans request for a longer, enriched story won out. They're going to kick off 2018 with episode Arden, so you know they mean business if we're finally going to see things go down from the perspective of the game's antagonist. Future Multiplayer In this section, we'll touch upon comrades, but then we'll go back to something a little bit better. Of all the things that happened over the last year in Final Fantasy XV, Comrades might just be the most important. While Comrades was supposed to be released on October 31st, 2017, it was delayed until November 15th. The downloadable expansion, being sold at 
just under $20 or free with a season pass, adds a co-op multiplayer mode to the game where players can create a custom avatar and make four-person teams with other groups of players online. The expansion takes place after the 12th chapter of the game, and your team's goals are to provide power to surrounding areas, rescue NPCs, and help build up local towns. Players are able to communicate with each other through a series of preset phrases and voice chat commands. An online test version of the game was made available to season pass owners back in August 2017, and people gave it glowingly positive reviews. More importantly, we got a trailer for the game which reveals a unique theme created by classic Final Fantasy composer Nobuo Uematsu. Uematsu says in the video that he thinks it's the best piece of music he's ever written for Final Fantasy. Some fans just can't rank it higher to Xanarkin from Final Fantasy X, but it's definitely in the vein of some classic Final Fantasy tracks. I'm Adrian, and thanks for watching Final Fantasy XV one year later. Have you played Comrades yet? Do you think all these changes and additions made the game better? Did we miss anything? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click that bell icon to become part of the notification squad. And if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard. Your home for video game facts.